like that whole deal he's got going on. All right, folks, you ready to start? Yeah. Welcome to practice practical shooting fundamentals. Uh, Mr. Kim and I are here. We've uh, we had a good class the last couple days. Yep. But I think this class is going to be even better. Uh, what we got planned is USPSA shooting from the ground up. So we'll start fundamentals like single target. We'll spend the whole morning on that, honestly. Just working on different paces of shooting, understanding to focus on the spot on the target, getting your grip right, all that stuff. We'll do a lot of that this morning. Then we'll start doing multiple targets, uh, target transitions this afternoon. Tomorrow we'll have a stage built over there and we'll be doing movement stuff. So you'll get to shoot on a stage probably as much as you want tomorrow. You get to shoot as much as you want, I think. And we'll be doing more complicated exercises with movement in them. Uh, it's our goal at the end of this. You understand what you can do on your own training to improve yourself. Now, you're probably not going to get a lot better in two days. Most people will not. Why? Because everybody here, you're showing up. You've all shot before, of course, and you have habits built up. You're not really going to be able to change them in two days, but we can reveal them to you. Uh, that's kind of our goal. So every exercise we do, we'll be really clear about what we're assessing. We'll be like, hey, we're assessing this. And then that'll mean we're not assessing other things. Good example, when we start doing fundamentals, we're not assessing how fast you draw. So you don't have to, you know, pop that first round, you know, as soon as you're out of the holster. We want you to get your grip set so you can learn a good grip, right? And everything will be like that. If we're doing target transitions, we'll be focused on just the gun movement between the targets. We're not gonna, you know, critique a bunch of other things. So while we're shooting any exercise or drill, you're gonna consciously be trying to affect one element of your shooting. You'll see that element will improve. You'll get a little bit better at that thing. It'll go like this. And then we'll switch and we'll focus on something else. And then what you were doing before, you're just gonna to revert to old habits. That's, that's what most people do. So you can't really change things in two days, but you'll have, you'll have homework, you'll understand what to do, and you'll go home with some sort of a plan for how to dry fire and live fire some changes into your shooting. That's our goal. Uh, as far as safety stuff, we're gonna do it pretty similar to a match. So when you're shooting on a stage, it'll be one person with a timer, one person shooting, unload at the end, just like you do in a USPSA match. And the drills will be different. The line will either be hot or cold. And when it's hot, you can handle your gun as and when you need to, whenever you want, as long as it's safe. As long as nobody runs down range, if you wanna pull your gun out, check your dot, change magazines, whatever you gotta do, we, that's fine. What we want is, uh, we get, hey, make ready. Everybody will load up together. Then we'll, you'll hear the timer. You do a repetition of the drill. Assume you'll do it again. So change magazines if you have to, holster, get ready to do it again. And then we'll do a repetition like that. When we're finished, we'll be, all right, unload. Everybody will unload together. You wanna be aware of your surroundings at that point. Like look up and down the line, just make sure everybody gets unloaded, gets the guns put away before you go down range. Uh, and that'll be it. So as far as safety, does that work for everybody? If you want to dry fire, that is cool. As long as it's safe to do so, the targets have been restored, nobody's downrange, we're fine with you dry firing. If you want to dry fire on a safe area, that's also fine. We encourage that. Uh, does that make sense to everybody? And then we'll take a break around the middle of the day. Depending on how things go, between 11.30 and 12.30, we'll stop for a little lunch, and then we'll, we'll keep going. Any questions? No? All right, well, we're going to be here uh, today, so, like, grab up... Uh, Guns, ammo, we'll head down. I'll demonstrate the first exercise for you, gather around. Okay. I'm going to draw the gun. There's no time limit for that part. I'm going to look at a small spot on the target. The gun comes up, and then when I see my sight there, I'm, my grip's what I want. I'm going to fire a pair of shots about as fast as I can pull the trigger. I'm going to let everything settle down, then fire another pair, and so on for a total of four pairs. Uh, what we're assessing here is really how the gun behaves in your hands. Okay, so why don't you come on up here, guys? I'm on the side where you can see my gun. I 
I want you to see how much the gun goes up in recoil. This grip sucks, right? Yeah. Okay, this sucks, I agree. As you can see there, as I was pulling the trigger, the gun climbed up in recoil and my second shot went up high. All right, this isn't like a pass fail thing. This would be like, that's good that I'm testing that. All right, I see what my gun's doing. And then what I want to do is improve my mechanics. So change my hand placement on the gun to get the gun to behave the way I want. I'll show you now the most common problem we're going to see. Watch my hand here. What am I doing wrong? Flipping the shit out of it over here. Yeah, yeah. So what I was seeing is my first shot would go into here. I would try to, you know, trying to control the gun. I'm pushing down into the recoil, and my second shot would go down here. Okay. What's the fix for this? Don't push it. What's that? Don't, push don't do that, right? Don't push the gun down, but like hold the gun with my firing hand without trying to torque it around. Right, so this is kind of how this drill is going to progress. You'll draw, do a string of shooting, okay, and then make what was I doing with my hands, what was I doing with my eyes, and what outcome did I get? As Mr. Kim always says, we don't criticize, analyze, like figure out what's going on. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Like, again, I'm not going to come over here and be like, oh, you shot C's, dumbass, don't do that. That's not really the idea. It's more like, hey, do you see what's going on? You'll be like, a good answer would be like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can feel my hand sense if I'm pushing on the gun. And I mean, yeah, and, and if some, if one of you here has the level of awareness where you're like, hey, that's always my second shot, like that would be great, okay? So I want you to shoot the gun in an aggressive way that makes you feel uncomfortable to try to understand what's happening. Okay. As far as how you're gripping the gun, that's gonna be key to this, as you're probably seeing. Now, everybody here, I'm pretty sure, is going to look like this in terms of the position of their hands, right? Firing hand high up on the back strap like so, support hand onto the, the frame of the gun. Maybe you'll do this, maybe this, maybe this. All of that's fine to me as long as it's the same every time. But the position's not really interesting. What I want you to pay attention to is the pressure, okay? So with your firing hand, I want you to hold the gun so it doesn't move around in your hand. More pressure than that, if you feel your hand clamping down, all right, probably what you're gonna be doing is pushing down on the gun, okay? Just with the fire hand, hold the gun. With my support hand, with this, I wanna clamp onto the gun, crush into the frame to make sure that the, the gun is not coming up off my hand. You should never, while you're doing this, feel the gun slipping around in your hand at all, right? It should be locked into position. Does that make sense? So if you, if, if you feel this, something is wrong we, we need to get get some surface on there to hang on to you need to hang on to it tighter something has to change that's not cool okay what we want here for an outcome is that your grip comes up it is consistent i guess the same every time the gun's behavior is the same every time meaning whatever my sight let's in my case whatever my red dot does it gets if it's doing this it does, does this up till like one o'clock whatever it does it does the same thing every time if you see your sight doing this, what's what's going on there? Grip's changing. Yeah, like something's changing and it's you doing it, right? It should whatever you're doing, it should be consistent. The gun should be like a machine. Really common things that are going to happen, right? As you're shooting, your firing hand is just going to clamp down more and more and more as you start stacking on more rounds. Okay, so you want to avoid that. And then a lot of times people's support hand just loosens up or just kind of leaves the exercise. All of that stuff is bad. Right, whatever you're again, whatever you're doing, it should be the same every time. Okay, does this make sense to everybody? All right, so once again, at the tone, draw the gun, no time for that part, get a grip that you're happy with, then it's pair, 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 and at the end of it, what matters is not so much where the bullet holes went, it's that you understand what's happening. Any questions? All right, our plans is if you're already getting really nice group size because you shoot better then go faster. Make yourself fail because you're trying to go faster than what you're comfortable with. Yeah, exactly. We want to we want to push you as much as we can. We'll start up close. You'll shoot like 40, 50 rounds. 
reload, we'll back up a line, shoot 40, 50 rounds. So you're gonna shoot a lot of rounds on this. And after a little bit, you'll start to, I think, understand what's going on. Okay, uh, let's get to it, guys. If you wanna line up, grab... We're not gonna bite. If anybody bites, it'll be dull. Okay. All right, notice we're seeing a lot of hits that are low on the target, right? Not like out of the A zone, because we were pretty close, but a lot of hits low. Now, intuitively in your brain, you think, well, the gun recoils up, so when I shoot fast, errant shots go up. But that's not really true, is it? All right, Mr. Kim is gonna show you a little exercise to help explain why this is the case. Yes. First of all, I wanna demo one thing. So some of the demos Ben did, what you remember about the teacup, the mechanics was terrible. And you remember how the shots were going all the way up. I'm gonna demo one more time, but with a vision control. I'm gonna look at the pacer and tell my body, hey, I want the dot there. And once it's broken, the dot goes away. I don't care, I'm gonna keep looking at that and I want that return there. I want the dot return there. And then as soon as it returns, I'm gonna fire the next shot. But look, again, I'm going to tick up, terrible mechanics. Amazing, Amazing. mechanics, isn't it? Every terrible shot, mechanics, that's how I grip the gun. Going to the fist side, smaller than the fist side. Mechanics is terrible. I saw, in my awareness, I keep looking at the paint, in my awareness, I saw the dot going crazy around it and coming back to where I look at. Shooting is not about looking at the pattern of the dot. It's about looking at a spot and then bringing the gun there by letting the body move to that spot. So we're gonna learn how to do that. The drill called one shot return is what we're gonna do in our demo. Could you, uh, Oh, I'll get you the timer. So I want you to watch watch the muzzle of Kim's gun. Look at the muzzle. So for this exercise, at the tone, he's going to fire a shot. Then he's going to return the gun to the black paster spot. Okay? He'll do it right, then he'll do it wrong a few different ways, then right again. All right. Stand by. Drive it down. All right, now be lazy. Be lazy. This will be a lot of you, so watch the muzzle here. Don't watch the target. That's not interesting. Is that realistic? No. That's not, that's not what we want. Now do it right again. Notice, when it's done right, did you see, after the gun was down, did you see any like realigning things? No, it just snaps back where I look at, snaps back where I look at. But the wrong examples, the first one, I was trying to guy, move the dot down by trying to move the body down. Instead of just looking at a spot and tell the body, hey, just stay there until it's broken. And it's gone, I returned that. I want it there where I look at. I just simply move it. Whereas when I do this, I'm trying to use the muscle to fight the recoil and stop the recoil instead of letting it move and letting it move back where I look at. The last one was I was looking at the dot to track the dot. I saw the dot go poof, poof, but it stopped up way high because I'm not looking at the spot I want to shoot, I'm looking at the dot. Following the dot, and I realize, oh, it's not on the, the black paster. So I look at the paster again, and then look at that. This is going to be a very common issue. Yeah. All right, so what we want you to do is focus on the target. And like Kim's talking about, we're not focused on the mechanics of pushing the gun around. We're focused on a spot on the target. You think about it like, I'm going to stare at a spot and let the gun come in. Uh, how about, here's a question for you. Should I focus on the target all the time? It's not a trick. Yes. Yeah, yes. what if the target's 15 yards away? Still. Yes, <laughs> I agree. So, in all cases, we're gonna, we're gonna, like, 
pick a small spot or look to a small spot on the target. That's where we intend to shoot. Uh, and it's not even just looking at a small spot. Like, you should look at that spot with hatred in your heart. Like, you actually have the intent to put bullets there. And that's going to help you, like, allow the gun to return there. Now, commonly, what do you think people are staring at, if not a spot on the target? Yeah, so when you're shooting fast, you see the red dot dancing, typically up and down. All right, if you look at that, if, you, if that catches your, your focus, your shots are going to go up. Why? Because you hit where you look, right? So if you're focused on the pattern of the dot, shots tend to go high for that reason. We'll say this, you hit where you look for better or worse. So we want you to stare at this black spot on the target. This, I mean, this will help you learn this. And it's like you look through the gun, through the sights, and you're staring at that spot. And you'll be aware of your sight moving off that spot and coming back. But if you keep staring at the spot, the gun will return to that spot. If you feel like you're fighting a battle with your upper body, with your arms to control the gun, you are almost certainly doing too much and probably pushing your second shot low. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, uh, so what we'll do from the blue line, we'll do that one shot return. And what we want is, you hear the beep, fire the shot, and it's like, as soon as the gun, the, the gun will cycle, and as soon as it cycles, it, we want it right back on the black spot. That's ideal. And here's a question for you. Should you see your sight go below the black spot? No. 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 Because if it does, like you're doing that, if that happens, you did that. Right? I'm, I should see my sight bounce off the spot and come straight back to it. And I never put, I just don't push the gun down. So we need that immediate return right to where you're looking. That's what we want. All right, let's get uh, Red come on up to the blue line. I want you to down. watch how much my gun recoils here and watch what my body's doing. As far as the amount of tension I have. Okay, so. Good, a good outcome on target, right? And you saw the muzzle recoil some amount, whatever that was. Okay, now I'm gonna try to minimize the amount of muzzle rise. I'm gonna tense up everything, get really low, wide, everything's rigid. I'm gonna roll my elbows out and even make even more force on the gun. How much less perceived recoil did you guys see? None. None. Not, it didn't really help, did it? Much, I mean, not, not as good of an outcome on the target, of course. I mean, I, I didn't perceive a big change, and that's pretty normal. Okay, what's the point with this? What we care about is that the gun behaves predictably, like it does the same thing every time. It is consistent, it keeps doing that, and it's durable. It doesn't change. The more rounds I shoot, nothing changes. That's what I want to see. Now, if you have it in your head that you want to minimize the amount of rise in the muzzle and you tense up everything to try to do that, you're not really going to be successful for one thing because the gun's going to recoil anyway. So two, now adding all this tension into my body, like, all that does is make everything else that you got to do harder. If I have to transition to another target and track a moving target, anything like that, which that'll happen in matches, right? That I have to go from one target to the next. All this tension in my body it kills all my precision there, right? So what we want is you just hold the gun with your hands and your forearms and let it recoil predictably rather than tense up everything to try to fight it. Okay, that makes sense, everybody? Also notice as we back up here, still very possible to shoot really accurately, right? As long as you are not over returning the gun, putting in too much input with your firing hand and your support hand stays connected, you'd be really surprised how far away you can get and still shoot really aggressively and really accurately. All right, shall we carry on from the green line? As the distance go further, people usually focus on the dimension of the brown. If you're five yards versus 15 yards, you will conceive, oh wow, that's a lot further now. But we have a tape there and we want you to pick a, even a spot inside that black tape so you can zoom into that specific spot Essentially, at five yards, you're still shooting a specific spot. At 15, you're still shooting a specific spot. So don't really be afraid about the size you're perceiving with the brow. Just keep looking at specific spot and shoot the same mechanics yeah. 
whether five yards or 25 yards. Yeah, so, so what he's saying is, so at, up at the five yard line, you see your sight move, right? Some amount. If I'm doing everything the same, I come back here, my sight moves the same amount. But now, the, I, I perceive that that sight leaves the target because now the target relative here is smaller, right? Because I'm at distance. So when I see that dot leave the target, I'm very inclined to change behavior, right? right. I'm like, oh, that's not good. I gotta, you know, put, I mean, I need to fight and push the gun down. That's very common. But if you keep looking at your spot and you trust, the sight will come back to where you look. You will get a good outcome here. All right, let's get back to it. I'll make a couple demos for you, and then we will we will have a chat. second thing is what I want. The first thing is what I don't want. Okay. What we were just doing, Kim and I, we call that predictive shooting. So what we ask you to do, if you remember, you look at a spot, see your sight there. Okay. You're going to fire a pair about as fast as you can pull the trigger. Okay. We backed up at distance, you know, at some point you get to where that's not going to work for you. Anymore, right. Whether that was, I think everybody could do it from this yellow line, but Maybe we go back to the, the blue line like a lot of you wouldn't be kind of like, yeah, I wouldn't do that in a match, that kind of thing. You're going to have some limit to your ability to shoot that aggressively where you still see what your sight's doing the whole time, but you're shooting faster than you can react to what it's doing, right? So I'm kind of committed to going, boom, boom, like I'm committed to that second shot before I pull the trigger. That's kind of what happens. Nobody's fast enough to see the sight return, process that, and then decide to pull the trigger nobody all right that's why it's, it's predictive shooting based on training and experience you understand how the gun's going to behave now when you get to a point where that's that's not going to work for you that you do it distance high risk shot um like a little head box at 10 yards something like that when you need a higher degree of accountability then you're going to see your sight and then consciously choose to fire a shot for each one right all right now the first example i gave you that was where i put the gun there and then I'm, I see the sight and I'm just sitting there doing nothing and really carefully pressing the trigger and trying to print a really pretty group on the target. That's not really realistic. That's not really what's going to get it done in, in, for the type of shooting we want to do, right? Instead, I need to react immediately. So the second string, you saw my gun, my gun was like come down from recoil, boom, 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 boom. What I saw is my sight looked like a ball. It's just a bouncing ball off that black spot. So I'm reacting, as soon as I see it come down, boom, I react to that, okay? That, that's the pace for everybody. You're gonna shoot at the pace of your sights, no faster, no slower. You perceive your sight back in position, you fire immediately, okay? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so it'll be six shot strings. We'll do the same thing. We'll start at the yellow line and start working our way back. All right. Uh, Mr. Kim's going to demonstrate a little trigger control exercise. Then you go ahead, draw your gun, cock the striker, aim at the target. So, finger just out of contact with the trigger to start. Now, we'll go ahead and watch his gun at the tone. Try it again. That's bad. I don't like that. Might do a slow one. That's a no go. I'll explain why in a second. It's a no-go. All right, now push it down. Down, push it down. Again. Yeah, okay. So we made a few examples there. Uh, what we like is that he reacts to the beep and pulls the trigger immediately without anything moving. When he pressed the trigger really slowly, I said, hey, that's a no-go. Why is that a no-go? Slowing down to get your That's hits. Not realistic to what we're actually going to be doing. Yes. I, I, you have to accept, yeah, you can always slow down and get a better outcome on the target. You can do that. That's not really what we're about. It is possible. 
And then finally at the end, you saw him like push the gun down a little bit. All right, this will sound kind of weird. For this exercise, you should see that you're doing it wrong initially. So let's say your target, your target has hits clustered here, and then a few of them are down here. All right, when you start doing this dry fire drill, your sight should reflect that. It should be like stable sometimes, and you can see it blip down low left sometimes. Why? Because then we know we're accurately simulating what we already know is happening, right? So a lot of people, when they do dry fire, they'll be like, yeah, I do dry fire, it looks perfect, like every repetition looks great. And I know their dry fire is fucked up. I know that. Because when you're shooting live, it never looks perfect, and your dry fire, either your dry fire is messed up or you're not assessing it correctly. So what we have here is a very realistic way to test your trigger control, where you're gonna react to the beep immediately and press the trigger back, hopefully without flexing the other fingers in your hand. You just wanna move your finger. Does that make sense to everybody? All right, now the start position for this drill is going to be your finger just out of contact with the trigger or maybe touching it. You're not allowed to put pressure on it and prep it up to the wall. Why not? It's not how it's going to be. It's no, easy. exactly. It doesn't work like that. If you want to do that, it has to be fast. It has to be prep press like that immediately. That technique's fine. You just have to be able to do it quickly. Okay, so we get, we want this to be realistic. So instead of reacting to your sight flashing down, you're gonna to react to that beep, then at the beep, press the trigger without moving anything. When we take away the recoil from the ammo, you're gonna feel what your hand's doing. So pay attention to what your, your hand will tell you what the problem is. And then you work to hold those muscles still while you do the drill. That make sense? All right, let's get everybody up here. We'll try it live. What about vision during trigger control? Should you be looking at the dot? Should you be looking at the spot you want the gun to stay? Uh, exactly. You look at a spot, tell your body, hey, stay there, stay that spot, stay that spot, stay that spot, click, stay there, spot. Make sense? Yeah. All right. Well, why we don't worry too much about the slow fire stuff? We're just going to do real simple at the tone, draw and shoot 10 rounds, no time limit. Right? So. You're going to fix your attention on the black spot that kind of comes up. Just accept that the sight's going to kind of float. And then carefully roll the pressure back on the trigger. And I say that, use that word carefully, roll, instead of you see the sight flash exactly where you want and then try to make the gun go off that instant, that'll be a problem. As long as you don't do that, it should be very easy to shoot a relatively tight group at this distance. Sound good to everybody? All right, uh, Red, come on up to the purple. We did a lot, of, a lot of shooting this morning. The ammo consumption will slow down, by the way, after this point. But a lot of shooting, and you'll notice there's a few patterns I want to call your attention to. So we started off fast and close, and then we, we slowed things down as we went, as far as what we were asking you to do with the shooting. Now, you, um, as far as how you grip the gun, that mattered a lot the faster you were shooting, right? Yeah. Now, for what we just did, that slow fire group shooting, I mean, holding the gun wrong is, is not really a huge deal. I mean, if you put the sight there and you pull the trigger straight, the bullet's gonna go where the sight is, okay? So that's why we started off close and fast so you could understand how the gun's gonna behave when you're actually shooting it aggressively. What were the big takeaways for you guys as far as what you wanna change? Shout them out when you know the shot. Grip. grip, grip. What about your grip? One, one is I gotta relax my my right hand and grip tighter with my left. I How many just, other people have some version? Like, that's most of you, right? That's the common stuff. You say, hey, I'm doing too much with the firing hand. I'm pushing on the gun. My support hand's not doing enough. That's most people. Especially at this point. Yeah, yeah. So when we, that's when you start out fast, and you're like, holy shit. Yeah, I got to really hang on to this thing. Yeah. Uh, that's a, that's important stuff to pay attention to. How about the, the, the visual focus point? Black spots. Did you find that was helpful? Yes. 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 So what you'll find is, just for your own training, if you move on with this, this is a crutch. This will make you get a better result. You know what I mean? If I put that, like, rounds will go there. But, so you don't want to have it there all the time. But using it occasionally, it helps you. Oh, okay, yeah, if I focus on that spot, in my head I try to project a little spot onto the target. In my mind's eye, I like a little black spot to look at. Like that, that you'll find helpful. Also, the other thing I like about training with these 
is it gives you a really nice reference point so you can see how the site moves in relation to that spot. And once you guys start to understand, like, oh, I should never push the gun below that spot, that, that helps clean up a lot of issues as well. Okay, but think about the big changes that you want to make. Right, and what I'd ask is, you go do that in dry fire. If you're the guy who's constantly, like you can see here, I'm tensing up my, my firing hand side a lot here. I just, I do aggressive dry fire to learn, I do aggressive dry fire to learn to keep my hand relaxed while I'm doing it. Right, again, doing it slow is not really gonna help me, is it? Because all of the things have to happen fast for us. Any questions about what we did before lunch? Me or Kim? Anything to add? One thing, usually when I tell the training group members, Usually when they first join, usually people get the focus, the whole year I tell people, hey, the whole year, focus on your vision. And I, I usually tell them, hey, for three to, up to six months, you're gonna still struggle. And then after six months, regular training with your vision focus, you're gonna get more on-demand performance going up higher, make sense? There's only two things about truly looking at spots on every target, and second, putting that aggression we were talking about. A lot of you, when you shot six shots, first, your gun was like super slow coming back down. And I tell people, no, tell, tell your body, I want to dot that spot now, now, now. As if you're gonna walk faster or move faster, but with the vision focus. That aggression, those two things. Spots, aggression. Automatically, everybody has better accuracy and faster shots. So master that. Yeah. All right, I think it's a good time to eat lunch. A little early, but. We'll take a little break and then we'll pick it back up. We're going to carry on, of course, working on the same basic ideas. We're just going to make it harder. So, and so watch close. Watch my body posture. Don't watch the target so much. It should be pretty clear what I'm looking for. did you note between those two anybody Interior head. yeah so the first time i wasn't trying to be subtle about it i drew the gun i was actually looking down what was i looking for the dot. Uh, the dot. dot exactly so i draw the where's the dot where's it oh there's the dot then connect to the red dot and then i just stared at the dot the whole time as i was shooting this i'm watching the dot rise and fall i'm waiting all for it to fall all the way back down before i shoot again so it wasn't that aggressive predictive shooting that we started on this morning I was just sitting there like very reactive to the dot which is not necessary at this distance when I transitioned to the target in the back you see there's a big delay a big pause why do you think that was because you weren't looking at the target you were yeah I'm staring at the red dot like, red dot go over there kind of like staring at the pointer the mouse pointer as I move to the icon or porn or whatever that I'm interested in right uh, I want to look where I want to go, and then the pointer comes to me. The second run, I did it properly. You saw my posture was different. Head stayed up. Gun came up to me, looking at my spot. Then I just shifted my vision to the target in the back, and when I saw the dot there, I went ahead and shot. All right, the second thing is what we want. So to say it a different way, you're going to draw and shoot this, this close target here pretty much as aggressively as you can, right? You might tense up your firing hand. Your support hand might come out of the contact with the gun causing you to tense up your firing hand. You might tense up your shoulders. You might stare at your sight as it dances, right? You could do any one of those things or all of them. If you don't do any of them, that's way better, right? Because it makes it easier to transition to the target in the back. So that's really the test here. That's why we're shooting six rounds on the close target. It's to try to build up tension or like get you to stare at your sight as it bounces. We don't want any of that shit. So when I look at the spot, gun comes up and shoot. If I, again, if I do everything properly, it's very easy to shift my focus to the target in the back and the gun will go right to it. Does that make sense to everybody? Okay, so the uh, red and blue groups from this morning, that's dead. We're just going to shoot half of you and then shoot the other half if that, if that makes sense. You need to add Mr. Kim? I'd rather be cold. Or hot. Yes. So we had a, that's a nice drill, right? You'll get to try it again. Um, We've got a couple of simple little concepts to explain. So first thing we'll do is confirmation. So you probably hear that, probably think in terms of like aiming. So aiming, at, oh, I'm gonna aim at that target. I put the gun over there. Okay, we line it all up. All right, cool. And shoot. 
Does that look like what you'd see in practical shooting? No, you don't see like, like that. All right, the why not is uh, if, if you train consistently, it only takes two, three weeks usually of consistent practice, you're gonna develop an index. So I, I use that word for it. So if I look at a spot, I draw the gun, I grip the gun the same way every time. And when I, when I put the gun over my intended target, the sight's more or less lined up. The dot's basically where it needs to be. So when you're shooting at speed, at practical distances, typically you're not really aiming, you're more confirming what you already think you know, right? If I look at that spot with the intent to shoot it, as soon as the gun shows up there, the gun's probably gonna be lined up. I just need to quick confirm and then go ahead and shoot. So to highlight this, Mr. Kim will demonstrate, we're gonna start with the gun down at a 45 degree angle, so the red dot out of your vision, we want the gun at full extension, not like this, so extend the gun, 45 degree angle at the tone the gun will come up to his vision so he's not going to start staring at the dot he's going to be looking at his intended target the gun comes up to his vision when he sees the sight appropriate we'll go ahead and pull the trigger all right so we'll start in the back target the back target i want confirmation three mr kim all right so gun down 45 degrees yeah look at your spot all right so watch his gun watch when the shot breaks okay stand by Okay, so we're seeing the gun comes up and it'll, it'll sit there for a beat and then you see the shot break, yeah? That's very appropriate for what he's shooting. I instructed him, hey, when the dot is stopped and stable, pull the trigger. All right, now we'll do the close target and this will be, I want you to react to the color of the red dot, Mr. Yeah. Kim. All right, stand by. Again. How much faster is he? You don't know this again. How much faster is that? It's By the timer, it's two tenths of a second. Yes, sir. Is he pull it pointed in, or are you still kind of going up as you're pressing? Neither. There you go. Are, are you fully pointed in? The gun stopped and you're pressing? Or are no, you no. kind of pressing it? Ne like, neither. Don't, like, we're not worried about that. I'm not worried about your arm position. All, the only thing he's looking at is visual. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense to you? So if, if your arm's doing something, but you're visually getting what you want, you're gonna pull the trigger. Okay, okay so here, well, what are you looking for there on the close one, Kim? The close one, as soon as I felt like there was a color flashing into it, I fired right away. So it almost like the red dot didn't look like a circle dot. It looked like a line, like a shooting star coming up to it. And then I just break right away. As soon as I, the shooting star comes to the spot I'm looking at, right away. So most people have it in their head that their sights need to look perfect all the time. Like your red dot stopped and stable looks like a red dot, <clears throat> all right? But most shots you shoot, practical shooting, that's not what you're looking to see. It's just a flash of color. Like we'll call it color confirmation or Kim will say confirmation too. All that means is you see that red streak, get it. I mean, and you can see how much they stack that up over a, a, a 10 targets engaging, that'd be two seconds. Two seconds faster just shooting when you see red instead of having the dot look perfect. So it's important to understand this concept. So we'll, well, everybody here will just repeat what Kim did. Gun starts down a 45 degree angle. Your vision will be fixed on the black spot at the tone, gun comes up. We'll do the back target first and that'll be basically try to make it look perfect, make the dot look like a dot at the close target, red smash. Uh, how many guys shooting irons? Is it, yeah, just one iron sight guy. Okay, so for you, front sight through the rear, looks pretty much perfect in the back. And on the close target, if you see red through the rear sight anywhere, send it. The biggest difference between the close one and far one, when I'm shooting the streak, my vision is still focused on the spot. And the very first time I saw the flash, but I'm not strictly coming up straight it looks like on the side it was looping around from the side but my whole conscious is i'm gonna try to keep trying to move it there i'm gonna stop move there move there but as soon as i saw the streak coming into it i fire right away right there was is... a grip issue so i fixed the issue and then you see the pattern going on more central but even if your grip was so bad and the index was off if you see the flash your whole conscious thing is always move there, move there, and then you see the streak coming into it right away. Yeah. There's no real time to adjust anything. But confirmation three, 
you want it stabilized on the spot where you look at. If you saw it somewhere wrong spot, you have to bring it, like make quick adjustment, stable, boom, right away. All right, does it make sense to everybody? All right, let's uh, get half the group up on the um, Okay, so just to reiterate, to make sure everybody understands, just that flash of color, like that worked, right? Kind of surprisingly. Um, now there's two things I wanna drive home. We're still focused on a small spot. At close range targets, I'm still looking at a small spot, but I'm gonna to react to something very gross. Okay, so it's what most people do when they wanna go fast in a USPSA match. Like how many of you have seen some like B-class dude squirt a bunch of bullets on close targets and it's fast, but they're everywhere. Yeah. That's it. That. That's that's <laughs> normal. That's that's the normal pattern. You see, it's like dudes are like, oh, go fast. <laughs> no, you're gonna react to the color. Sure, it will be fast, but as long as you direct your attention to a small spot, like if I miss this spot a little bit and the red streaks over here, then it, yeah, I'm still gonna be close enough. So that's what's hard for people to understand is that you react to you just react to a streak, but still driving the attention to a small spot. It's very difficult to do. Okay. Does that make sense to everyone? Yep. The other thing to point out is that a lot of people, they get to, I mean, if you shoot a little bit, you think, oh, I can shoot the middle of the target, right? Like everybody here can shoot the middle of the target given no time limit, but you're probably doing something that's inefficient, like staring at your dot while it rises and falls or something like that. Um, people have the belief that if they just keep practicing, they're going to get faster. That's not really how it works. The top shooters fundamentally have a different process. They're comfortable just seeing that flash of color and shooting. They're not seeing what you're seeing. So they get acclimated to seeing less, and that's a big part of it. So you should understand you will not repeat an inefficient process and get faster. You have to have the right process, and then you, you, you will be efficient, and things will, things will happen quickly. Yes. And what's the benefit of going vertically for the streak? Versus, I've done drills like this horizontally, like this. There's no benefit. I just don't want you pointing the gun at your neighbor. Okay, makes sense. Because you have a line. I didn't, yeah, okay. okay. That makes sense. That was, I didn't, because it felt weird to me to index up. Yeah, that's all. I mean, yeah. it probably. You, I mean, you draw a lot and do that, but yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, I'll show you another quick drill for your awareness, and it's going to come down to transitioning between spots on the target, okay? When you go from one spot on one target to another spot on another target, typically you shouldn't feel any pressure or tension in your body. You should just look where you want to go and let the gun come to you. Same way you use a mouse pointer, right? You look at a spot and you're not conscious of, you know, moving your hand around the pad fast. That's not really productive. So I want you to watch the muzzle of my gun closely. I'll do this right, I'll do it wrong. The exercise is pretty simple. At the tone, I fire a shot and then I shift my vision to the other target and my gun will follow, okay? So here we go. Are you ready? Stand by. Okay, so I did it correctly for a few repetitions, and you saw it was not very dramatic, right? Boom, the shot fires, the gun would just go over here. What I was seeing is I shift my attention to the other spot, and it's like my dot would just drop down right where I'm looking, okay? Then, then I, I changed things up. You probably you saw the gun go poof, recoil, come back, and then move. Boom, recoil, come back, and then move. That's a lot of people do that. What I want is you disregard that target as soon as you shot it, right? So it's like, as soon as I'm done shooting at this target, the gun will be up in recoil. I'm not looking at this target. I'm going to look at the next target. And that's hard for people to understand. But as soon as you fire that shot, disregard it. Look at the next one. Then you saw me stare at the red dot and then push the gun. What did you notice there? You, the, the movement of the gun? Too far. Yeah, exactly. So that was what most people do. They stare at their sight and they try to push the gun around. You could see that was very imprecise. Uh, I, every time I'd have to, I'd be looking at that spot, I'd have to wait for the gun to come back to me. The problem with that is it feels fast, right? If I'm putting in a lot of physical effort, I feel fast. It doesn't make me fast, but I feel that way. 
And then I did it correctly again, which I just shift my vision. And what you're going to do is this, the drill I just did, I want you to do it. And I think you'll, you'll see like, oh my God, it's like effortless when I do it right. Yes, sir. I've heard people talk about driving with your knees. Do you just not, do you just use your eyes and let everything else go? It sounds, that's retarded when they say that. I, don't, I, I mean, it's not dumb, it's not wrong. It's all the way up to retarded. <laughs> Seriously, I mean, it's like, that makes no sense. Because you don't, it's not about how fast I physically move the gun between the targets, as you're seeing, right? I mean, these things are just spaced in depth. The only time you'd really drive the gun to a target would be a really wide transition. For the most part, no, you don't do anything like that. And that's like, it's it's counterproductive extremely. But don't, don't worry about how fast you physically move the gun from one spot to another. That's not the limiting factor here. It'll be how fast you can acquire that target visually and then react to what you see, like in terms of confirmation off the gun. It's not, the, the movement of the gun doesn't matter that much. Does that make sense? It's just, it's like, not it's counterintuitive because you would think that this how fast i do this is what matters it's really not i'll give, give you a specific cue so when you break the shot and vision goes to the next target and gun goes to the next target but when exactly is that exactly when the bullet goes out of the barrel of course but exactly when that is is the exact moment of the trigger click when you dry fire you can train this too the moment the trigger goes click or hammer falls, which is when the trigger breaks, that is the moment you exit. Not after you saw recoil happening or sight flashing up or you see the hole appear on the target. No, none of that. As soon as it's click, does that make sense? The click defines when the actual bullet goes out pretty much. Okay, well, let's give it a try. Let's get half the drill. Six shots up front, then two in the back, then those couple little drills to help inform you what it ought to look like. I'd like you to watch my gun from the side here. I'm going to shoot this drill aggressively. Okay. And with your eye a little more trained, it should make more sense. Watching from the side, it wasn't so much that it was fast, right? I wasn't pulling the trigger crazy fast, just about as fast as I can, but it wasn't anything silly. But when the gun came up, as soon as it hit my eye target line, I see that flash of red, start shooting. And then you didn't see it, a bunch of shoulder, t when I transitioned, I just looked. And the gun, it was like no drama. The gun just went boop, like that. So that's what's going to make you fast. You have to understand. It's not more attention in your shoulder. It's not trying harder. It's like, you know, as soon as I see red, I'm gonna react. As soon as I'm done with that target, I look at the other one. I'm not gonna throw the gun over there. I'm just gonna look at it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like with your eyes trained a little better, it's like you have to understand that is where speed's gonna come from. This is Ben's analogy. <laughs> if you are using a computer and you wanna move the mice, you look where the mi mice point pointer should go and just look at that spot and then bring that mouse you don't just throw the mouse or with the muscle or try to move the whole body with it you don't do any of that you just simply move the arm and let it follow where you're looking at you guys have all seen high level shooting i assume on the internet do the top guys look like they're trying that hard no that's why it's so frustrating yeah yeah i mean they run like rape tapes, you know, like, like when the, the movement's really dynamic. But the shooting is they just, their body posture, everything about it, they typically look very relaxed. And this is why, this, like relaxation equals speed. And okay. mobility. That's true. We got a nice target transition exercise for you. All right, now finally we have mixed targets, mixed difficulty. So I'm gonna demo first, and then a couple issues a lot of you guys are gonna have. So first, good one. Pay 
pace, a little bit of pace change, far target, control, the medium open target, a little sporty, closer, no shoot, risky target, control. Let's go, that's the way I like to see it. Generally saying, it sounded the same. It sounded like you're shooting four same targets. No confirmation for me. I didn't see any, I didn't, saw a flash on certain things by luck, but most of the target, it was just like nothing. Now, the, the next common one. First shots went pretty okay, but every second shot was going up high. So what was I doing? Sucked into the dot. Sucked into the dot. I feel like, oh, I need to track the dot. I'm gonna focus, follow the dot. That was why it exactly was happening. This transition drill just challenges, just keep looking, guiding everything with the vision and just seeing the appropriate amount as you break the shot. Make sense? Yeah. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what is appropriate for each target. So this morning we did that aggressive predictive shooting. We started with that. We did reactive shooting like dot press, dot press. We did it at different distances, right? So you should have a good idea of what your capabilities are. Okay, so this is where we're gonna ask you to make choices. Good example, this, this back target here from the blue cone. How many of you are comfortable flash a red predictive pair? Would you do it in a match right now? So yeah, a few of you, I, that's what I'd expect. Most of you, I'm expecting a no. That's good, that means you're paying attention. Okay, what about this target? Feel comfortable with that aggressive predictive shooting pair? It's a bit closer, right? So it's like you're gonna decide what you're, how you're gonna be comfortable attacking each target and we wanna see you do that. For everybody, when, the, when there's a no shoot here that's gonna kinda dictate that you shoot reactively, we wanna see you shoot reactively. Meaning, you drive your vision to a small spot, dot press, dot press. Now, it's very difficult for people to fundamentally change the way they're approaching the targets in the same string, right? That's why we potentially just mixed up the distance and the target configuration. But we want to see you approach it in a way that's reasonable for you, given your skill level. So we don't want to see that, that crazy predictive pair on this. I want you to see you do, like, uh, aggressive shooting where you can and then switch to reactive shooting where you're gonna have a problem. Does that make sense to everyone? Also, it'd be helpful to do a dry fire iteration. So watch as I go through this dry. I'm not gonna pull the trigger or simulate the shooting. So I'm gonna look at a spot, gun comes to me. Look, 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 look. As soon as I see my sight flashing and I would be shooting, I just react by going to the next target. Now, this way, it'll be pretty easy to tell what you're doing wrong. So if it looks good to me, I'm just going to, hey, I'll go faster. How's that look, guys? Good. Don't be shy. I won't be shy with you. Yeah, it's like choppy. What I'm seeing is the dot comes in, slashes all over the target. So it's like, yeah, I'm going fast, but I got to relax my shoulders, be visually precise, so the, the gun actually stops properly. So that's the game we're going to play. Go as fast as you can until you start running into a problem, work through the problem, and then go faster. That, that's what we're looking for here. Does this make sense to everybody? Okay, I'm sorry, one other note. You'll notice we took away the black spots. <laughs> yeah, you don't get them anymore. So you actually have to project that spot for yourself. We're not just gonna shoot at brown. You're always gonna look to a small spot on the target. All right, the way this will run, we have three zones. They're, we've divided up the range with yellow cones, green cones. You're gonna shoot from the blue cone. Uh, you'll do four or five repetitions every turn, then unload and we'll pay, paste up the target. So you can just rotate through and shoot all the scenarios. They're all a little bit different. We don't care if you shoot left to right, right to left, or in order that doesn't even make sense. That's not what we're assessing. We're just looking at how the gun moves between the targets. Any questions?
Okay, well, let's get to it. Okay, we worked on a bunch of simple concepts today. The concepts were simple, executing them, not simple. So, like we said, this, this exercise we just did with target transitions, we kind of worked out a lot of those same points. Predictive shooting, reactive shooting mixed together, picking out small spots on the targets, and then managing your body tension. It's very difficult to do that stuff, right? But some of you guys are starting to get it, where you're getting your, your hands to cooperate with you, you're actually picking out spots. And you could see when you shot well, it didn't feel that fast, did it? That's the hardest thing I think for people to get is that their perception is not reality. Like typically when you're shooting really well, it will not feel like anything special. It feels magical. Yeah, there's been a lot of times like I've been unloading my gun like at nationals and I'm just like, eh, I didn't know if that was that good. And it's like a stage win. It just doesn't feel magical, right? And that's, and that is hard to get through your head. Um, well, some shooters got a lot faster without knowing it. Like I told, oh, it was a lot faster than the last one. And one of you guys said, it didn't feel like it. Here's the thing, where, depends on where your vision is, you get more information on that area. So if you're on an uh, interstate, looking at a mountain and a car passes by in between it, versus if you look at the car, then car seems slower. You experience that? Depends on where your vision is. Some people may say, hey, when I look at the right spot, everything slowed down. It didn't really slow down. You're just visual processing speed went off. Yeah. So master that. <laughs> All right, well, we're gonna pick it back up tomorrow. We'd ask if you help us police up the trash and put these stands away, then we will get out of here. We'll be back shooting nine o'clock. All right, uh, welcome back for day two. Today we're gonna be focused on moving around, uh, especially on stages. So we have a stage here. You're gonna do a lot of runs on the stage today, most of them dry, and then plenty of live ammo too. Uh, we're going to be focused on how you move around, like I said. So I'll give you four rules as you're training on the stage. They're going to help you. Um, and then, like I said, as you go through it dry, we'll be critiquing you, try to help you move around better. So first, we didn't discuss it all yesterday, but stance. This is what we want to see, feet spread apart, knees bent, ready to move. Think about it like this. Like, oh, hey, Kim, you want to race to the, let's race to the back part. Ready? Okay. <laughs> okay, on the beef. So you see how he's standing feet together like this, and it's very difficult for him to get out of position. Whereas if I'm serious about running a foot race, you could see I naturally lower myself down and get ready to, to set off. Uh, that's what we want to see when you're when you're shooting. So when you when you come into position, we want to see you feet spread apart, knees bent, like a short stop or a fighter or something. You're very mobile. Uh, what will happen if you stand like this, many people will, it's like, oh, I want to go over there now. So you'll move over there, you'll kind of coil up like a spring, and this back foot kicks off, and then you take off. And it takes, you know, a substantial portion of a second to get yourself ready and then go. So we don't want to see that. We want to see you stop in position like this, re like ready to get moving. That's what the habit should be. It's easy to say it's hard to do, especially when you're... Uh, you know, worrying about shooting. So we'll, a lot of our focus on our exercises today will be getting into that stance and then making it a habit that you always stop ready for the next move. So for all of our drills over on the live fire side, um, we're gonna start and stop just like that. And we'll be, we'll be pretty rigid when we critique that. The next thing, we wanna see you do full power, full speed movement. And that's just so it's realistic training and you can actually learn to slow yourself down. Most people don't really train at full speed. Then they go to a match, and then they're all juiced up, trying to go fast, and they're overrunning positions, or end up, you know, super tense or something like that. We just want to see you train full speed. A good rule for us is if you run this stage like twice, back to back, dry, you should be sucking air after two runs on it, right? So it's maximum effort, full power, full speed, but you won't be able to. I mean, you can't do 30 repetitions. Like that would be kind of training yourself wrong, right? It wouldn't, it would be too slow just so you could maintain the pace. So we just want to see it, boom, as, as aggressive as you can go. And like I said, the key there is to learn to slow yourself down and control your body, okay? The next thing we want to see is go up as you're coming into position. So as you can see here, you got three targets available. Everybody's going to have to come to the corner. What we want to see as you're running over here is before I get to the corner, two, three steps, look at the targets, mount the gun, build my grip, and I'm looking to start shooting as soon as I can. 
Now we want you to start shooting when the sights tell you. It's not like, hey, shoot as soon as I see the target, or shoot as soon as I stop, or anything like that. It's the sights will tell you. But you just gotta listen. So like, when you look to a target, you're like, yeah, I wanna engage that. You'll be looking for the wall in these cases, the gun gets mounted, and when the wall's out of the way, your sight's stable enough on that side of the target, you start shooting. Again, easier said than done. The other thing we wanna do is minimize extraneous steps with our feet. So I'll make a couple examples for you here. One way to do it. Other way. Like that. So you see that little hitch at the end? I just see my sights go like really disturbed. So we don't want to be picking up our feet and setting them down <laughs> unnecessarily, especially as I'm standing in position and transitioning and shit like that. That is not great. We don't want to see that stuff. So that's four, th four things we're going to ask you to do at the same time. And it'll be very, very hard, as you know. Those four things, what we're trying to do with those is to bring you focus. In your training, if you're just casually going through the motions without any focus or aggression, when you actually shoot at a match or at, at, when, when actually the bullet matters, you're going to do the same way as you practice. So we want that focus in the practice so that whenever you go to a match or you have to perform you are automatically at that focus level switch on automatically because you train all the time with those focus yeah mr kim you want to do a couple dry runs for you guys so the dry runs that he's going to do like i said full power full speed he's going to get the gun on target so he's happy with that he's not going to pull the trigger or simulate the shooting as soon as the gun's on like Aligned on target, he gets confirmation, he's going to move on. All right, you ready? Stand by. Nice and low there. Very aggressive on the movement. Run up nice and early. Check out his stance. You can see him trying to apply those mechanics. Now, Kim, that looked good, right? Yeah. All right. So if you have one that looks like that, looks good, what are we going to tell you to do? Go faster. Go faster. Go faster. All right, go faster. Let's do it. You can just see how stable the gun is on target. He's definitely getting nice sight pictures. Really good. Now you can see already two runs. He's sucking air. So that's what we want to see. That's and we'll try to make it look like that as much as we can. Yes, sir. Stepping over the line is okay. Yeah, so the way the rules work is you have to shoot from within the line, okay. but you can step out of it okay. if you want. I just want to share on the very push run, that was a mistake. I was aware of it. Very at the end, as I'm panting, heart rate goes higher. And then targets get closer, I wanted to shoot faster. My vision didn't lose focus, but my hand was trying to take control over the vision cramping up a little, I feel my fingers kind of curling it at the very last two trigger pulls and the, dr the dot as I'm pulling the trigger. Mm -hmm. So I was also aware, without losing the focus on the spot, I saw the dot lingering and then kind of moving. All right. I wasn't focused on the dot, but I just aware of it. So that's what we're looking for from a lot of you guys, that level of awareness. So we take the ammunition away, you're gonna really understand your habits. Here's a, here's a super common one. People come into position and they tense up and then they're like tense up their upper body. That'll be really common. And when we're doing it without ammunition, it'll be easier to feel that that's going on, that type of thing. So the dry fire, you're gonna get a lot out of it. This will probably be the most valuable thing you do today is dry runs on the stage, but it'll be good. All right, any questions here? All right, let's go over to the left one for you. This is a nice drill to work on a couple of the aspects we were just discussing, so. All right. I said I'll make two examples. One of them will be bueno, one of them will be no bueno.
did we see there? Gun was shot while moving. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So shooting while moving in the second example. Gun stayed up. Yes, Mr. Rowe. First one here, you had your feet close together yes. at the start. Yes, and you saw what it was like getting out of position. It was like when it's time to go, it's like, okay, I have to like pull the, well, you don't have to pull the gun in. I chose to pull the gun in to make an example of what <laughs> things to not do. Right. So the first thing I, that I would want to highlight here is that your mindset, we don't want it to be shoot, move, shoot. That's uh, not the efficient way to look at it. It should be continual shooting, right? So I don't, in my head, I'm not even really looking at this. Like I don't think about like two different shooting positions. It's like, I'm gonna start here, shoot this one, look over here. I'll just let my legs carry me over and I'm looking for my targets. I'm continually in shoot mode. At no point am I like, I'm really like, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna shoot. I'm gonna focus on movement and then dismount the gun like that. It's continual shooting. From the side, It'll look like somebody has a rope on the end of my gun and they just pull it right to the next target. Doesn't matter if I can see it or not. We don't have much, you know, much walking to do here. I'm going to be continually in shoot mode, All right? Uh, like I demonstrated, we want to start and stop the drill, feet spread apart, knees bent. Obviously, they're not going to start you like this most of the time in matches, but um, you start you start training yourself like this and then you start doing like, oh, start position like this, then you know, widen out into your stance as you start a drill or something like that. So that'd be more realistic for what it's going to look like in a match. All right, so Jim. How about when we shoot on the move? How should we move our legs, foot? We're not going to We're not going to be no. like beating you up about the, how you step your feet. I think that is how crazy. you like heel to toe, toe to heel, whatever the term you bring it on. They don't matter at all. Simply. You look at a spot where you want the bullet to go to and tell you about it. I just want the stop stable, stabler, stabler. Imagine if I gave you a cup full of coffee, hot coffee, and I tell you, hey, walk over there. Then in your head, you're not like, okay, let's go. But you, you're focused, look, stabler, stabler. You see, you're using that vision to tell the dot, I want it to stay stabler, because if you, if you, to this, there's a no shoot to catch the bullet. Yeah, so you're focused. It's nice of you to put yes. that there. Yeah, focus, <laughs> focus, focus really hard to be stable. Focus. Yes. Focus harder, <laughs> you're gonna get focused on the no shoot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. So it's, uh, as a general rule, when you're transitioning, especially when you've got this wide a transition, as you're turning and you're looking at the spot on the target, that your dot is going to intersect with. Uh -huh. I'm guessing you're never really looking through your optic. You're looking outside your optic and your optic's gonna that come. That should be view. a huge no -no. So like the idea that I'm gonna maintain awareness right, of right. my sight the whole time, that's counterproductive, yeah, right? Okay. So think the mouse pointer example, right? I'm not staring at the pointer the whole time. So if you hear somebody say like, oh man, I lost the dot when I transitioned or something, that, that's indicating like a low level of shooting, to be honest, because high levels, you're not, we're not interested in maintaining awareness of the site all the time, right? If I'm not shooting, I'm looking for the next thing to shoot and I'm not aware of the site and I just trust the site will come to that point that I'm looking for. Thank you. Yeah. If we see your head glued on the gun like this, Kim will hit you, you know, Asian schooling and all that. <laughs> yeah, so you got it. <laughs> yeah. One thing I didn't understand from yesterday, um, but I didn't think about it till last night, where do you differentiate on uh, which targets you want to have that higher level of focus on and which targets you want to shoot as soon as you see the flash of color? That's it's not a higher level of focus. No, we're always going to be looking for a small spot. Okay. Right, so it's like, a, it's like a yin and yang stuff, right? So it's like always you look at a small spot. Okay. But what changes is what I react to. So if the target's 50 yards away, right? I'm going to look to a small spot on the target and the dot's going to be stopped and stable and look like a dot okay. before I start pulling the trigger, right? Yep. If the target's close, I still, I mean, I'm driving my focus to a small spot, of okay. course, but I just, that flash of color streaking near that, boom, send it. Does okay. that make sense? The it, focus is the same. The level of confirmation is what we play with. Okay. Yeah. Imagine in a faster paced shooting, I, I call somebody, hey, just Try to make the dot bounce non-stop, never dot, dot circle, but just bouncing, bouncing. 
imagine that aggression is just same as if, if I have an iPhone and then drop it to the toilet and you have to catch your own iPhone. Gotcha. And you gotta track that and then yeah. snatch that. Just have those little slaves build me a new one. Yeah. At that point. <laughs> <laughs> so what, in, during transition, there's a dot, sorry, the color flashing into Are you really the spot sorry though? At. As soon as you see that flash right on the spot, you, you're snatching that with a trigger break. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense? As soon as it comes back, hits that spot, bam again. Yes, yeah, so that's that aggression and anticipation right there. Yeah. All right. So, just like yesterday, we've got three zones here. A start cone. Mm. We want you to shoot one target, move opposite the barrel stack, shoot the rest of the targets you have. We want to see you stop. 50 50 weight distribution where you can see everything. We don't want you trying to cut the movement with a lean. So, just move where you can see everything. Then dry runs on the stage. So, what the flow will be, you'll shoot the drill once, like one set of runs through here. We'll paste it, then you go do dry runs on the stage, fill your mags, come back here, run this again, and we'll just cycle through. Sound good? All right, and let's get what, to it. Repeat what you just said about the lean. I don't want you to lean. Got it. Got it. If I see you leaning, I'll be upset. Got it. Okay. If you lean, you compromise the shooting, shooting fundamentals. All right, Professor Kim, words of wisdom. Solution is not emotion, it's fission. Got it. All right, everybody, now we're doing another movement. This is unmounted movement, where the distance is quite far, unlike before, where distance is short, you gotta be prepared to shoot and continue shooting. But this one, commit to running. That's what we're gonna do. Before we get into that, like, what, the real distinguishing thing for us in between mounted and unmounted is if you have the intent to shoot in the next two or three steps, you're gonna keep two hands on the gun, it's gonna maybe come down, but then it'll come right back up. So we'd say, hey, the gun's still mounted. If the movement distance becomes longer, we wanna see hand off the gun running properly. Yes. And running properly, pro properly, it should look like a sprinter running. Well. Now, <laughs> yes, hopefully. Not in terms of speed, but the, the look. It, does sprinter run fast this way? No, when they go, they face the direction of running, and then they pump out everything they can. Yeah. Like pump hard with the legs, thrust the hips, <laughs> pump out with the arms properly. You gotta focus on the pumps. <laughs> the yeah. Oh my. Sorry. <laughs> That's gonna end it's up gonna on his get reels. It's gonna be an Instagram reel for sure. Of course it is. <laughs> you should be as powerful and fast as possible while keeping the gun safe, safe angle. That's all you need. As powerful as possible with 100% effort. The reference over here, we have yellow cone and green cone. Green cone is the shooting position. And this is our recommended slow down position. I'm gonna demo, good one. And then another one with what's probably gonna be happening for a lot of you here. I like that. Isn't that, isn't that frustrating how good a points he shoots? It was all the hip thrust, I think. Yeah, it was. <laughs> now, this is going to be a very common issue you're going to see. You ready? Stand by. some of the issues that you probably detected. I started very narrow and then when it comes to moving it was like three different steps. I sprung down, repositioned my foot and then start going. Whereas the first one already wide apart all I had to do is literally push out one step. First step just move out. The second one was yes it was definitely a lot of delay. <coughs> 
I shot the popper, I saw the ding, I saw the hit mark, and then, okay, now I gotta go. No, you just shoot that popper with appropriate amount of confirmation, with good trigger control. Once that trigger is broken, or how I cue it, is if my finger is at this much angle, it, my trigger is breaking for PDP. At that angle, I wanna move it the same timing, instead of waiting to hear or being reactive, and waste my time reacting to something, but I'm gonna be predicting, right? Break right away. Yeah. All right, I wanna highlight a couple things here as far as uh, uh, the drills constructed, especially what we're doing visually. Now your eyes are gonna drive what you're doing, right? Hope you know that, it's a human being. How about this? If your wife is talking to you and you're not looking at her, what does she know? I'm not listening. Exactly. Exactly. That's the way life works. So where you put your visual focus, that's what you're really paying attention to. So what we're going to be looking for here, when you're done shooting, what's the next thing I'm going to look at? Okay, where am I running? Slow down to that. Where am I, what am I looking at, guys? It's not Green. a trick. The cone. Which one? Green. 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 Okay. So it's spot on target, spot on target, green cone. The gun's going to come down, and I'm going to turn and look at that cone, and now it, this is maximum attack, like as aggressive as I can go. Like the hip thrust is good. I like to hear some grunting, some actual physical effort. If you sound like a female tennis player, that to me is a bonus. That means you're actually trying to move your ass over there. Like as aggressive as you can, run, 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 run. Your attention's fixed there. I don't want to see you're looking down range, checking your work or anything like that. No, this is like you're attacking that cone, very focused on it. When I get about to this yellow cone, and this will change depending on how you're set up physically. We got some big, you know, corn-fed Midwestern boys here. We got a soy boy with Joel. Yeah, we got, we got, you're pretty buff. You know, you, so depending on how you're set up physically, that'll change the breaking point. But around the yellow cone, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna shift my attention to what? What am I, what's the next task? That's not green cone, now where do I look? Target. Target. Right, nothing in between. There's nothing in the middle. It's like green cone, okay, target. Now at this moment, like I'm going to do three things at once. I have to decelerate, I have to build my grip back on the gun and visually acquire the spot I'm looking to shoot. Okay, so run, run, run. I get to about here and now the focus switches. It'll be like, look where I want to shoot, build the grip, mount the gun. To help me slow down, I like to think about taking short choppy steps to help decelerate. And it helps to visualize kind of sitting back on my butt, all right? So I can decelerate into position. I'm gonna start shooting when the sights tell me, all right? Does that make sense? Not before, not after. I'm not gonna start shooting when my foot hits the ground or anything like that. The sights will dictate what's gonna happen from that point. Hey, does that make sense? Okay, so that's what we're gonna be paying attention to here, and we'll be switching to live runs over on the stage. Any questions? Okay, let's get to it. We're gonna work on a little bit of shooting while moving now. And I think you're gonna find the key to this is a vision thing, of course, that you're finding spots on the targets. For our exercise here, we're using these vision barriers. You're gonna start either on the left side or the right side. Uh, and I'm going to start, if I start on the left, I can see the target on the left. I cannot see the targets in the middle. That's kind of important for the exercise. Uh, I'm going to shoot the left target from the light, left side, the right target from the right side. The two targets in the middle get shot through the middle. <coughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and make a few different examples for you. better not quite what we want yet oh, no. so much for fixing it Kim thank you <laughs> you're welcome
talk through the three examples you just saw. And the first time I did it, what do you think I was looking at? What was I staring at? Yeah, I was pretty obvious about it. I looked down, I drew the gun, I'm looking for the red dot. And then how much confirmation was I using to fire those shots? Quite a bit. Yeah, it was just like, dot looks perfect, boom. Dot looks perfect, boom. And you can see it was very slow. And then as I was walking, I looked very kind of stilted, didn't look very relaxed. Like, these are things we don't want, okay? The next time I did it, it was much more relaxed, all right? But still over confirming, I would say. Stop, press, stop, press on everything. The last time, that's kind of what we want. You can see the movement was relaxed and fluid. And then as soon as I saw a flash of red on the target, I'd react by shooting how many shots? One or two? Two. Two, yeah. So it was like predictive shooting. I mean, we did this yesterday, shooting those doubles at this kind of distance. I mean, that's pretty reasonable to do that. And you could see the outcome didn't change, right? So I just look at a spot, flash red. I still keep looking at the spot and I see the red dancing on the target. But I'm shooting the aggressive, predictive pair, keeping my body relaxed and then finding the spots on the targets. Does that make sense? That's kind of what we're looking for. Now, what we're not focused on is the footwork for this. We don't really care too much how you walk, but I mean, if you need some guidance there, you can see I'm just turning my hips at about a 45 degree angle and slow walking through here. The focus here is really gonna be vision. That's why we have these vision barriers up. How often, I mean, if you shot USPSA matches, how much of the match is like kind of slow walking and shooting targets at close and mid range? What's that? A lot. A lot. Yeah, that's like 80% of what you do. One of the hardest things to do is to find a spot on the target, especially when you're dealing with a lot of vision barriers. Now, what we want is that you, your focus is out on the target. How about this? Should your gun ever appear clear? Should my gun appear clear to my vision? No. 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 Should the barrels appear clear? No. Why not? You should be looking at the target. Yeah, I'm not focused on the barrels, right? I'm looking I'm looking for something I know is beyond them. So I never stare at the barrel. I look where I believe the target is or where I can see the target, and then the gun's gonna follow me to that spot. I wanna also remind you yesterday, we did a little exercise focusing on the target and then walking back and forth where you were staring at the site and staring at a spot on the target, right? This is where you're gonna kind of notice if you stare at your red dot and you try to make it perfectly stable, it'll just increase the apparent movement, right? So you want to keep focused on the target and let the dot kind of wiggle around in the center. That's fine, okay? Does this make sense to everybody? A lot of you will be doing this. Once you shoot, as soon as you start walking, you retrieve the gun. And completely forget about the shooting part of it. Your commitment is not just focusing on moving like that. Your highest priority here is gonna be shooting and keeping that shooting mechanics the whole time throughout the movement. What that looks like is look at the vision, gun comes up, next target, gun moves straight. Ben will always say intent to shoot. Yes, and the intent to shoot is important. Yes. Do not bend your elbow, do not retrieve anything. Make sure the gun is ready to fire as soon as the target is coming out of the barrels. Okay, any questions about this? All right, we'll go back. Live runs on the stage. I'll be over there running that. Mr. Kim will run this. We'll be on it, I don't know, hour, hour and a half, something like that. So you should get to shoot as much as you want on it. All right, let's get going, guys. Now, we're gonna do another transition drill. So basically, body stick drills. We're gonna be shooting body and the head on both targets. So we have four engagements. But as you just see it, there's the head and the body. So we should expect, it will probably sound a little different when you shoot the body and the head, yeah? Let me demo first. faster on the body, sounds a little slower on the body, but in terms of my vision, I am seeing flash, flash, and then stable, stable on the head. Now I'm going to show you a common mistake here.
And another one. I think by, by now, it's kind of yeah, easy to guess. So the first wrong example was even though the target difficulty was the same, so shooting body and the body, one sounds ba bam, and the other one was just way too slow. But the difficulty is the same. So your confirmation of your sight is inconsistent. So if you can shoot fast on the body, you gotta shoot fast on both targets. And the head is the same way. And then the last one, shots start to go really high, and I saw the shots going over the head too. What was I doing over there? I was focusing on the dot, the dot. and I followed the dot and then see it. Oh, it stopped up high, but I didn't care. I was fo so focused on the dot, I couldn't guide with my vision where the bullet should go. So vision has to focus on that. Now, a lot of you over here made a lot of improvements today. So people, you'll be able to shoot pretty okay group, pretty sporty. Then what do you do next? Faster. 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 At this distance, some of the good shooters here, I literally want you to go as fast as you can pull the trigger and see what happens. I want to show you what's possible and let's see what kind of issue I'm going to have it here. your vision on that second head box exactly i started the first touch very nice groups and i start tracking the dot rather than visually guiding now let's try one more with the visual guidance This time it hits the target, yeah? Pace didn't change, but what I changed is I'm focusing on spot there, spot there, spot there, spot there. Depends on the vision, the accuracy is totally different. All right, guys, just to emphasize a couple points here. Normally, in a match, if you slap two on the head box, you're like, yeah, that's good, whatever. We're actually looking for you to hit the credit card. Where should I look exactly if I want to hit the credit card? Where the A is? Hello. We have most guys have dots with offsets. Yeah, Twelve o'clock above the A. Let's do top. Give me a spot. Top perf. Top, top of the perf. Exactly. That's great. It's an easy spot to find. Yes. So I want you to look to the top of the perf. Dot press. Dot press. Nice reactive shooting. Okay, where you're you're making sure that you're you are going to try to put him in a credit card. Lower A zone, like Kim's saying, as fast as you can hold the trigger, that's what we want to see. Now, close range, high speed shooting means tension is going to be an issue. Firing hand tension, typically what we're going to have there is trigger freeze down low. And if you're getting hits in the, in the neck, so first shot, second shot, usually that's your firing hands tensing up and pushing down that second shot. Um, if you start, if you your focus switches onto the dot, very common that shots sail over the head. So we want to avoid that. Okay. This is a, this is a, a fun drill. It's a good, good way to shoot. All right. Well, should we get going? Yep. So we have eight stations. You're going to get to shoot as much as you want on this. All right, folks. So two days in, I feel like uh, what I said is probably true. But I said, hey, we're going to reveal these habits to you, but we won't really be able to change them. Does that sound accurate? Yep. Yeah, same. So the question becomes... How do we change these habits? All right. In my opinion, it takes two, three weeks of practice, like near daily, if you want to change something about your shooting. That doesn't mean live ammo. It just means you got to practice two or three weeks and work at it a little bit every day. Now, the frequency is more important than the duration of the practice, meaning 
If you practice two hours on Saturday, that's not as good as 10 minutes a day, Monday to Friday. I'll explain why. So let's say you got a problem where when you when you try to draw fast, you just clamp down on the gun when you're firing hand when, it, when it's coming up. That'll be a lot easier. Uh, so let's say I set up my dry fire practice, I start doing some aggressive training, I replicate the problem, I start working through it, then I get to where it's like, yep, yeah, I'm drawing the gun, I'm happy with the grip I'm ending up with. Every day that I fire up my practice, I have to I think through, like, yeah, I got this problem, I'm like clamping down on the gun, you know, and when you think through what it is you're even trying to accomplish, that's like half the value of the training session right there. Then you do it a little bit, it doesn't have to be long, like five, ten minutes, and then you'll notice like two or three weeks later, you don't really have to pay too much attention to it. You're just doing the thing you want to do. Okay. That's how you're going to actually change these habits. Are you going to change it going to matches more? No, you're just going to repeat what you're already doing. Right? Mm -hmm. That's how that's going to work. And uh, that's, a, that's a one struggle that a lot of people have is they want to go shoot matches. Um, but as you're seeing here, like, you don't really get time in matches to assess even what's happening. You're lucky if you know where every bullet went after you shoot a stage, right? Because you guys are scoring and pacing it up pretty quick. You don't really know what happened. So it's difficult to even assess what's going on. Now, shooting a stage here in a controlled environment, that's pretty useful, right? Where it's not, you know, it's not, it's pretty informal, it's pretty chill, and you can kind of shoot it a few times and explore a little bit. Uh, but this isn't very efficient for practice to set up a stage like this, is it? No, it's like not feasible for most people, and it's inefficient for other people. Right, so that means for practice, we gotta rely on drills that are simple, that kind of hone in on those habits that we wanna change. And like I said yesterday, like, your dry fire has to replicate issues that you know you're having with live ammo, okay? And when I, like, that's why I'll say, hey, if, I, if I'm the guy who clamps on the gun when I try to draw fast, like whatever that means to you, you have to draw what you consider fast and create that problem. If you just do it slow and don't, don't create the issue, then as soon as you go to the range, like, oh, I'm going to draw fast now. Like, whatever that is for me, I'll just keep doing it. So we, it's not about making your draft fire perfect or pretty. It's about making it simulate what's going on so you can work on it. Yes. About the training, outside training with a gun, you should try to train in a daily life when you don't have a gun. So, for example, the vision stuff we worked on, we already talked a couple about, hey, if you're on a red light waiting for the green signal, just pick objects around you at different distances, five yard object, 12 yards object. Okay, that's the spot I'm gonna look at, that's the spot I'm gonna look at. And then your own cue, put the intensity in, spot, spot, spot as fast as possible. That was one thing we talked about. One thing, I, when I go to the bathroom at home, I have sometimes targets or sometimes an object. Can we pee on that green little dip pee thing? Like <laughs> <laughs> See how far back we can get from the yeah, no, loop? Just get it in there. And if I fuck up a little bit, that's the janitor's problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bring it back, memories. So on the way to the bathroom, for example, kitchen, whatever, you pick an object on the way and use an air gun. You just look at a spot and then tell the body, hey, track that, track that, track that, track that. If it's not following you, it's either you're not really picking a spot and telling the body to follow it, instead you're following the arm, or your shoulders are so locked up and tensed up, it doesn't move. It moves with the body instead of it moves <coughs> and following the eyes. Make sense? Check the shoulder tension, things like that. This, is, this can be done multiple times a day. If you have a minute break, three minutes break, do this. You can't physically shoot as many rounds as some other professional shooters and expect to be good like that. But you can train small fractions here and there and then have a continuous build up where some shooters do three hours per week, five hours per week, but stop that and they lose attain attaining knowledge. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, guys, do you have any questions for us about anything we did? No. But just one question. How many of you felt like the vision was really changing your shooting? Everybody. Yeah. It's important. Yes. All right. We'd like to see you shoot the stage again. So if you'd like, you don't have to. But if you want to, let's go over there. Everybody can have a run through it. We'll see how we got on. And we'll tear it down and go home.